lot of reviews for Sonic games that open with the same line of dialogue about how the Sonic franchise isn't doing so well these days. It's not that they're wrong, of course. Sonic the Hedgehog in 2006 was so abysmal that by all means it should have been the kiss of death for the little blue guy. Some of the earlier games weren't much better either. Pinpointing the moment where Sonic's career went off the rails is difficult, as everybody has a different opinion on the subject. To some, Sonic has never once had a good game in 3D, and to others, even Shadow the Hedgehog was worth playing. But the real question is, why do we keep coming back to Sonic? If Sonic has always had such a hard time adapting to the third dimension, why have we had to endure nearly 10 years of questionable 3D Sonic games? Like an archaeologist, playing a 3D Sonic game is about sifting through the dirt to find the priceless jewel buried within. There is always that one brief instant where everything lines up just right and you see that underneath the bad controls, past the awful storyline, and beyond the hundreds of bottomless pits, there lies something special, even if you only see it for just a moment. In some ways, Sonic Unleashed doesn't really stray from this formula. You've really gone and done it this time, Eggman! <laughs> The game is divided up into two halves. During the day, you are given control of the hedgehog you know and love, and once the sun sets, things get hairy as you transform into the menacing werehog. Borrowing heavily from both Sonic Rush on the Nintendo DS and Secret Rings on the Wii, Sonic's daytime gameplay is primarily about two things. Running really, really fast, constantly moving forward. That's not to say you aren't allowed to turn around and go the other way, it's just that everything in the game is designed to push you forward, whether you like it or not. Forcing the player to run fast isn't a new concept for the Sonic franchise, but when you give the player the ability to achieve super speed at the touch of a button, lining a floor of every level with automatic speed boosters makes the game feel a little more scripted than it needs to be. The scripted feeling is only intensified by the inclusion of on-screen button prompts to warn you of oncoming obstacles, in addition to the occasional quick time event. Woo! Feeling good! Werehog is Sonic Team's typical attempt to inject alternative gameplay into the Sonic franchise, this time taking design cues from games like God of War and Prince of Persia. Unfortunately, neither the fighting or the platforming is implemented very well. Combat for the Werehog doesn't really have a lot of depth, even after learning all 30 plus fighting moves. Defeating enemies usually entails mashing on your favorite combo two or three times and occasionally engaging in an awful quick time event for bonus points. Platforming sections would be a welcome change from all the speed and combat if not for the game's camera system. Sonic Unleashed has a nasty habit of locking the camera to a fixed position at the wrong times, which can make jumping from platform to platform a little more frustrating than it needs to be. Keeping all this in mind, though, the Werehog is still more fun than doing things like fishing or hunting for jewels. Sonic, is that really you? You know me. Never a dull moment. <laughs> Between levels, players visit various towns based on real-world locations. The huge, empty ghost town of Soliana has been instead replaced by smaller, much more streamlined towns, each one based off of a real-world location. To some, the mere existence of these towns at all will be viewed as some sort of blasphemy. But for those looking for more to do, they provide a little bit of additional flavor with some optional side quests. Even the storyline has been streamlined, dropping the dense, melodramatic narrative of past 3D Sonic games. Police! in favor of something simplistic and lighthearted, feeling more like a Saturday morning cartoon. Where's the fun in having my plan succeed without any challenge? It's obvious that Sonic's daytime stages are the showcase in Sonic Unleashed, with their incredible level of speed. There's nothing quite as visceral as your first sweaty palmed run through a new level, the game daring you to go as fast as you can through increasingly dangerous environments. Numerous improvements have been made to prevent unintentional deaths, such as lining narrow passages with barriers to prevent players from falling to their doom, and the game is generous with extra lives. Some may find it unfortunate, then, that new levels cannot be played until you collect a specific number of sun or moon medals in order to unlock them. However, as long as you keep an eye out, most of their hiding places are fairly obvious, and it's not until the last level or two that metal requirements get steep.
By now, it's apparent that while Sonic Unleashed can be an enjoyable game, it's not perfect. Then again, very few games are perfect, and when comparing it to the past 3D Sonic games to come before it, Sonic Unleashed stands as the most progressive foot forward this franchise has had since the Sega Dreamcast. If you enjoyed games like Sonic Adventure 2 and the more recent entries in the franchise haven't soured you to the character, Sonic Unleashed may just be the game for you. Just give it a rental first. Mm, not so bad!